Hey, happy, 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 beautiful, amazing evening. Dr. Bob Rakowski here out of Houston, Texas with today's edition of the Conversation on Success. Uh, and what a great topic. We're gonna pay a tribute to Bob Proctor, one of the greatest teachers, uh, certainly in my lifetime and probably of all time. Lots of wisdom for all of us. So let's just dive right in. This I pulled from Proctor Gallagher's Facebook page and it was written by Sandy Gallagher. She said, over the years, as we've encountered people in our lives passing, Bob would always remind me that it's not something to be sad about. We all come and we all go. It's part of our eternal journey. That no matter who passes from the physical world, they remain with us in spirit. Uh, and Bob is alive in so many hearts, but he's also alive in so many tools that he created that will long outlast his physical body. He taught so many phenomenal things. And here's a statement from Bob that I really, really love. If I were starting over today, I would probably go into network marketing because it is probably the easiest way to set up multiple sources of income. Now, the fact is that most people that go into it never earn any money is another thing. They're just not working with the right people. Study the real heavy hitters. They all have multiple sources of income and they have money coming at them from all over the world. It's a beautiful thing to understand. Doesn't matter where you live, you can be setting up sources of income all over the globe. You can just keep setting them up. You like the idea, don't you? Well, I'm going to tell you something. You are capable of doing this. Oh, he's absolutely right about that. We're if all I was capable. Over today, I and you know what? One way to get there fast certainly is to plugging into the major events. So Unite is coming April 9. You know, Organo Corporate, listen, we want one phenomenal information packed day, and that's what they've created April 9, 2022. Uh, tickets are $19.99. There's the website, unite2022.organoglobal.com. And we are absolutely a global company. So my favorite wisdom from Bob Proctor, and that's what I'm going to apply. He said, read to learn, apply and teach. Uh, and then I'll share with you the four books that he recommends that he felt were the top four that he really spent a lifetime studying. Then he said, know thyself. And he would often say our spiritual DNA is perfect. And we'll expand on that. Keep in mind, we have, uh, we are an eternal soul. He says, we're a soul that has a body, not vice versa. Then his paradigm process. If you want small improvements, change your behavior. If you want massive advancements, change your paradigm. And that's profound wisdom there. We'll share about the paradigm shift. Uh, and then our high, higher faculties. And Napoleon Hill talked about that. Bob really taught those very, very well. And when we develop our higher faculties, we can think and grow rich. And then he also wanted us to know that there are natural laws that govern the universe. So here were his four recommendations. His book, You Were Born Rich, Think and Grow Rich, The Science of Getting Rich, uh, and then Infinite Power. So Bob has a chapter in You Were Born Rich called The Razor's Edge. And very, very simply, the difference between the ultra successful and the average is typically in consistent small improvements, just a little bit each day, a little bit each day. Uh, and that compounds magnificently. From Think and Grow Rich, his favorite quote was, persistence is to the character of a man as carbon is to steel. Uh, and so persistence makes a man strong in the pursuit of his process of thinking and growing rich. I'm going to go to Earl Nightingale here about persistence. He says, men credited with all kinds of ability, talent, brains, and know-how, including the ability into the seat, see the future, frequently have nothing more than the courage to keep everlastingly at what they set out to do. They have that one great quality that is worth more than all the rest put together. They simply will not give up. They persist, in other words. When a man makes up his mind to do something, then it's only a matter of time. Staying with his Staying with time takes bulldog persistence. 
This seems to be the entrance examination to success, lasting success of any kind. Uh, and there it is. And I always think of Muhammad Ali when he was fighting uh, George Foreman. Uh, and you know what? He let Foreman beat him up till he got tired, quite simply. And he said, you don't lose if you get knocked down. You lose if you stay down. So he persisted enough. Remember the, the proverb, fall seven times, rise eight. So how about this in the science of getting rich? Bob's favorite quote, the whole process of mental adjustment and attunement can be summed up in one word gratitude. Uh, and think about that. Can you be grateful for everything? You can find a way because when we get to the law of opposites, the law of polarity, you're going to find out that nothing is good or bad. Thinking makes it so, or some would say everything is equally good and equally bad. It just depends on your perspective, another higher faculty. So we want to develop those higher faculties. And then how about your invisible power, my invisible power, our invisible power? The power within you which enables you to form a thought picture is the starting point of all that there is. And again, Bob really, really loved that quote. And then he had a formula for success that he quoted many, many times. You want to partner with infinite. So if infinite is within us and flows through us, well, we ought to be able to partner with it. And I like this podcast, another quote from Bob. He says, when you're dealing with infinite, you can never take more than your share because there's infinite for all. And then another quote from him, another podcast, the biggest part of me, you will never see. So what does he mean by that? Hey, it was spirit, always spirit. He knew that he was connected to infinite uh, and did such powerful things. But he liked to study both science and theology. He said, you know, they, they really were not in opposition. Theology or the study of God was the study of cause and science was the study of effect. So this is Tom Chi. He's got a TED talk. Everything's connected. Here's how and he tells stories, stories of the heart, the breath, and the mind. And he said, without the big bang and without supernovas, we wouldn't have iron. Iron is a central molecule of hemoglobin shown there, and that carries oxygen through our blood. So there's the story of the heart. Now, when we start talking about the breath, you start looking, you know, billions of years ago, the earth's surface was covered in carbon dioxide, water vapor and nitrogen, just basically little to no oxygen. But there was a bacteria called a cyanobacteria that would actually breathe in carbon dioxide and exhale oxygen. Uh, and he says something very clever in this TED talk. He talks about how you know this organism was microscopic and it had a very short lifespan, maybe a couple of weeks. And it must've been saying to itself, well, how can I make a difference? Well, I'll tell you what, all of these little differences make the difference. And then the story of the mind, he talks about the story of the piano and he calls that the palette of being. So prior to the invention of the piano in 1709, someone could not be a concert pianist, but whatever we can be is forever expanding. For instance, we could be a professional network marketer. Uh, and I liked looking up this. So what happened before the Bing Bang? Was it nothing and then all of a sudden something? Well, now they've got this idea here. They said about 13.75 billion years ago, all the contents and energy in the universe was contained in a singularity with infinite density and temperature. It began to expand rapidly, and this expansion is known as the Big Bang. Now, some described it basically the size of a peach, Everything in the universe, all the energy, all the heat, all the everything, all the matter, the size of a peach. Maybe it was even smaller than that because of its infinite density, infinite temperature, it could have been infinitely small as well, but very interesting thought. And here's Bob's statement. There's a power flowing to and through us and it's awesome power. Science calls it energy. Theology calls it spirit. That power is all knowing and it's all powerful and it's evenly present in all places at all time. Well, sounds like infinite to me, an infinite spirit flowing through us. If you're okay with calling it God, 
awesome or call it spirit or call it source, but it's there and it flows through all of us. And again, I'll repeat his formula for success, which he quoted someone else, by the way, partner with infinite for success. Then he had a, a YouTube, The Secret of Think and Grow Rich Reveal. And remember, he got pretty famous in the movie, The Secret. And it really has to do with changing your paradigm. And I'll go to Stephen Covey, uh, author of The, the uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Highly Effective People Are Successful. Uh, this was the top business book of the entire last century. He says, if you want minor or small improvements, change your behavior. The key to major improvements in your life major advancements comes from changing your paradigm. So Bob is going to define a paradigm. He says, a paradigm is a multitude of habits fixed in our subconscious. Uh, and therefore we act on them subconsciously or with less than consciousness. So our actions directed by our subconscious until we rewrite it will produce our results. Well, actually not until always, but we want to rewrite it so it creates the results that we want. And he's taught the paradigm shift many times, which I've attended virtually many, many times. Uh, and then Eric, uh, uh, Eric uh, Earl Nightingale, uh, one of Bob's personal mentors, he listened to this record many, many times. The strangest secret in the world is that we become what we think about. But keep in mind, maybe most of our thoughts are subconscious. Now, how about this? Do you want to know what you think about most of the time? Take a look at the results you're getting. That will tell you exactly what's going on inside. So are you getting the results you want? Maybe it's those unconscious, subconscious thoughts that are directing your results. So Think and Grow Rich, the organo version, I like that, right? There's their logo. Thoughts lead to actions, lead to results, but for too many, it's subconscious thoughts leading to actions we don't want, leading to results we don't want. So let's take care of those thoughts and literally rewrite the subconscious. Now, the summary of Bob's paradigm shift is this. People either move by inspiration, probably few things more inspiring than love, desperation, and we tend to get moving if our back's against the wall or if we feel really, really stuck, or how about hard work? And I use Michael Phelps as my analogy there. And Bob says, here's the most consistent way, work hard. Maybe along the way you get inspired, hopefully you don't get desperate, but work hard and you can definitely create the life that you want. So here's what Bob's really liked in, about Napoleon Hill in his book, Think and Grow Rich. Napoleon said, an educated person is one who has so developed the faculties of their mind that they may acquire anything they want or its equivalent without violating the rights of others. So I want you to think about that. How wonderful, and maybe we even tweak that. We can acquire anything we want by adding value to people. We could even go to Zig Ziglar. We can have anything in life we want if we just help enough other people get what they want. Uh, and I love Ziglar's law as well. Again, another simple summary, rich people think differently they purposely create the subconscious mindset of success. Mastery of this rich mindset will lead to riches. And then Einstein had to pipe in on it. We cannot solve our problems with the same thinking we used to create them, or Bob Proctor would say with the same paradigm that we created them. So rewrite that paradigm. And this is worth repeating. Do you wanna know what you think about most of the time? Take a look at the results you're getting. That will tell you exactly what is going on inside. Uh, and Bob was very famous for this uh, stick person. Uh, and he says, you know, ask someone the color of their car, they can tell you. Ask them to describe their refrigerator, they can tell you. Ask them to describe their mind, and they're often at a loss. He says, no one's ever seen the mind. The mind is a process. And by the way, he also says there's one mind that universal mind, that spirit mind that we all have access to when we access and develop our higher faculties. But ultimately, he talks about how your conscious thoughts become an idea, the idea becomes an emotion, it, the emotion is expressed through the body, and that will create our results. Now, what if you selectively programmed 
your subconscious mind. Uh, and Bob was a huge fan of affirmations. He started with gold cards that he carried in his pocket and he still does, but he also taught to write with your opposite hand. I'm, in, I'm so hapful, happy and grateful now that I am. And this was when he taught how to make a million look small. I am earning a million dollars a year. That truth is clearly imagined in my conscious mind. It is effectively planted through constant spaced repetition in my subconscious emotional mind. Therefore, it is presently moving into physical form. I would encourage you to screenshot that and put in whatever your goal is. It's definitely worth doing writing every day with your opposite hand. And he loved this from Thomas Troward, one of his uh, favorite authors. My mind is a center of divine operation. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression. And this means the production of something beyond what has gone before, something entirely new, not included in past experience, though proceeding out of it by an orderly sequence of growth. Therefore, since divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner in me. Consequently, in my own special world of which I am the center, it will move forward to produce new conditions always in advance of any that have gone before. So keep in mind, your mind is a center of divine operation if you allow it to be, if you train it to be, might be a better statement there. Earl Nightingale's strangest secret, you become what you think about. And then he went on to say, most people don't think. In fact, he said, uh, you know, 95% really don't think. 2% of people think that they, uh, sorry, 2% of people think, 3% think that they think, 95, no way. We are all creatures of habit. We can do most things without even thinking about them. Our bodies take charge and do them for us. The body is basically the servant of the mind. So we want our mind to work really, really well. Uh, I'm a fan of Sadhguru. Uh, watch how your habits ruins your life without you even knowing it. And here's what he says. Our habits are basically unconscious, subconscious, and he's a big fan of being conscious in everything. Consciously take control of your mind, your actions, consciously apply universal laws, and the world is yours. I also like this quote, God is the creator, not a manager. Humans have the privilege of managing their own lives. So how wonderful is that? He also goes on to say that Charles Darwin says it took 1 million years to change a monkey into a human. But he says, look at us. Within four hours of eating a banana, we turn a banana into a human. So how wonderful is that? And how fascinating is that? So here's what he said. The creator is definitely working within all of us. And this quote, the source of creation is within you. You can be just a piece of flesh or you can be the creator himself. This is the choice and the potential you have. Now, keep in mind, we are part of the creator. We can't do all that the creator does because we're a minuscule fraction, but we're given the ability to create. So how wonderful and powerful that is. And how about Einstein? He said, everything is energy and that's all there is to it. Match the frequency of the reality you want and you cannot help but get that reality. It can be no other way. This is not philosophy, this is physics. And then we'll say it again, the subjective mind is entirely under the control of the objective mind. With the utmost fidelity, it reproduces and works out its final consequences, whatever the objective mind impresses upon it. But then Bob Proctor would simply say, and many psychologists agree, that uh, subjective mind is not really developed for about the first six, maybe seven years of life. So it's very important that that early environment create an amazing paradigm for the children in it. And I'll even go to Carl Jung. Until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it fate. Uh, and low level of, of brain activity, about 5% is conscious, maybe 95% subconscious. And then Bob's higher faculties, and I threw in one, 
Uh, he talked about will, intuition, imagination, memory, perception, reason, but I threw in focus. He grouped focus under will, uh, and I'll show you where I believe that is absolutely different. So we look at Babe Ruth who said, you can't beat the person who never gives up. And I talked about Ali, he wouldn't give up. He beat George Foreman, although George Foreman was a much more powerful fighter. When we start looking at intuition, notice that it comes from direct or immediate uh, spiritual perception. So insight, spiritual perception is in the definition of intuition. And I like this quote, men who are devoid of the power of spiritual perception are unable to recognize anything that cannot be seen externally. So, you know, our imagination also is gonna play into that. About intuition, Einstein said this, the intuitive mind is a sacred gift and the rational mind is a faithful servant. We have created a society that honors the servant and has forgotten the gift. Another favorite quote of Bob Proctor. And I throw in this one, logic can get you from A to B. Imagination will take you everywhere. Uh, and I also like to know that imagination can be the preview of coming attractions. So create the attractions that you want. When we start about talking about the law of focus, the, the seventh faculty that I've thrown in, what you focus on grows. Uh, and I, I heard this from a, a TED talk from Peter Sage. He says, what happens in the Amazon forest? Well, everything happens in the Amazon forest every day. Somewhere there's a snake killing a rat. Somewhere else there's a hummingbird being grown. So you wanna choose your focus. Uh, and, and focus on that, right? When you focus on the good, you will certainly see more good. And a metaphor here, I think it's from Joel Olstein. He says, look, we've got a rear view mirror and we have a windshield and we should probably use our focus about the same. Why do we care about the, what's behind us? Well, because we have lessons in there uh, or good memories. So where's your focus? Hopefully in the future. And what is memory? It's a mental activity. The brain's ability to reproduce the past experiences and thought is what memory is. And this is called then memory is the sum total of what we remember and gives us the capability to learn and adapt from previous experiences. Notice it says, and also to build relationships. Good times become good memories, bad times become good lessons. Perception, he loved to quote Wayne Dyer, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. And keep in mind, you can always learn to look at things from a different angle, from a different point of view. Uh, and then the Pygmalion effect, this just basically says that you can pass on your well wishes to other people. People are influenced by the expectations built upon them. So expect health, happiness and success for all. And I'm often reminded of this one. The most important decision we make is whether we believe we live in a friendly or hostile universe. Uh, keep in mind, if you think we live in a friendly universe, you're going to see friendly, you're going to find friendly, you're going to build friendly, you're going to create friendly. Hostile, well, you might attract hostile. So let's stay friendly. Reason is the capacity of consciously making sense of things, applying logic and adapting or justifying practices, institutions, and beliefs based on new or existing information. Uh, by the way, when I created that slide, this was what they uh, used for the movie. And I, I certainly liked that they had a cup of coffee in their hand in that movie. Uh, and Voltaire said this, and Bob really liked this quote, there's no such thing as an accident what we call by that name is the effect of some cause which we do not see or perceive or know of, but we do live in a universe of cause and effect. So my graphic for the universal laws, I like infinite love really being that which drives the universe. We're all absolutely connected. Then we have vibration, transformation, sowing and reaping, incubation, gestation, relativity, rhythm, and opposites or polarity. So vibration and attraction, you know, there's a lot of vibrations that we can put out. And I think they come out from the essence of us, especially from that subconscious paradigm, according to Bob. 
So constantly work to create a really good paradigm that puts you in a positive vibration, looking for what you want to see. And remember, if you seek, you will find. So as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. As you thinketh in your heart, that is your vibration. That is your point of attraction. Uh, Nobel Prize winning information, energy and matter are intraconvertible. So we look at this transformation, energy is mass times the speed of light squared, but we could also take uh, mass to equal energy divided by the speed of light squared. So you think about that, our body is uh, absolute ton of potential energy. We just need to learn to transform it and apply it. When we start looking at the law of sowing and reaping, the law of cause and effect, as we sow, so shall we reap. But keep in mind, we're sowing with what we're thinking in our heart. So let's write really good thoughts into our heart, cause a good vibration, and then reap a beautiful harvest. Bob liked to talk about incub incubation and gestation. So uh, an elephant, that takes 550 days. A human, uh, 260 days. They say 280, but they're, they're you know, figuring from uh, a, a different counting point. Uh, and then a carrot, 60 days. So you start thinking about that. Bigger things often take a longer period of time to create, but not necessarily. You know, if you've got a strong enough, consistent enough vibration, People have done some absolutely amazing things in a very short period of time. The law of relativity, nothing is big or small, but comparing to something else makes it, you know, and Bob might say that, you know, this person on the end is really big uh, compared to this person who's, by the way, uh, really big compared to that person. That person's really small compared to that person, but he's really big compared to that. So, you know, then you often would say nothing is good or bad. Thinking makes it so. Uh, nothing is big or small. Comparing it makes it so. So relatively, literally everything is relative, even the laws and the laws all work together. Then we have rhythm. There are seasons of life. There are certainly seasons of nature. The tide comes in, the tide comes out, the sun comes up, the sun comes down. It's a very predictable rhythm. How long has it been going on since the beginning of time? Will it happen that way tomorrow? It absolutely will. You know, there is a rhythm of life. And then some call it polarity, some call it the law of opposites. I like to think of complementary synergy. Uh, and really that's what the symbol of yin and yang is. And keep in mind, nothing is purely yang, there's some yin in it. Nothing is purely uh, yin, there's some yang in it. And together the two can be very, very complete. So it's good to look for complementary opposites, especially those that have skills uh, and things that you want to need, but don't necessarily uh, have those skills that you've developed. We can create a phenomenally diverse team that can help us grow wonderfully. So the Bob Proctor wisdom, read to learn, apply and teach, which he did so well. He was definitely a rags to riches story. Know thyself, our spiritual DNA is absolutely perfect uh, and you know, we're part of that source energy, of that God energy that made the universe and therefore God's energy works within us uh, if we allow it to. Re remember, so God is the creator, man is the manager. Uh, when we optimize our higher faculties, that would be will, you could also call that perseverance, intuition, imagination, focus, memory, perception, uh, and, and reason, then we can think and grow rich more effectively. And then we have the natural laws of the universe, cause and effect, rhythm, relativity, the energy of attraction, uh, the concept of transformation, polarity. Uh, those are all the things that are going to keep us an incubation gestation working with the law. Unite again, April 9th, 2022, a one day uh, outstanding event. Tickets are on sale now. Go to unite2022.organogold.com. Uh, and I'm gonna finish with this regarding Bob. Here's what he said. Over the years, as we've, been, as we've encountered people in our past lives passing, 
Bob would always remind me that it's not something to be sad about. We all come, we all go, and that's part of our eternal journey. That no matter who passes from the physical world, they remain with us in spirit. So Bob, you certainly do. You're in my heart. You're in my mind. You've taught me many great things. Uh, and I'm forever grateful. You made a difference to millions. Congratulations on a life well lived. And I like to sign off with these words. I'm Dr. Bob Rakowski, absolutely knowing that we can all be happy, healthy, and successful. So good night all, and God bless.